okay so um, about the um, the text of the of the september exam hmm? uh, i checked the questions uh, on the um, on the slack and uh, I, I think that the most uh, sorry, uh, the most difficult point uh, was that of uh, the sort of hierarchy of, uh, of roles uh, that we have in the application, okay? Where there was this sentence uh, here. Um, let me zoom it. Uh, where each role has also access to all the features of the lower roles, okay? So we thought about it, uh, and uh, it seems uh, um, maybe more general and more complex uh, than what we need, especially because... Uh, the general administrator then should have access to all functions of all group administrators of all groups uh, and this becomes complex to 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 implement okay so we sort of try to clarify <laughs> and simplify this request uh, and and you can tell me whether now uh, as i explained in a moment uh, uh, it will be clearer uh, or, or simpler to do um, the modification is that uh, we delete this sentence, so it's not true that each role has access and so, so on, but we still have the three roles uh, with the constraint that all users have the role of student. Therefore, all users may have access to the functions of, of the student role. Okay, so what it means that is that every user always, okay, always has access to this set of functionality for the role of student always okay no exceptions so even if you are the general administrator and you log in uh, you will still uh, have all the functionalities that any user would have okay then if you are, are also a general administrator in addition to these functionalities you will also see these other functionalities that are reserved to the general administrator and if in addition to being a student you are also a group administrator for one or two or some groups you will also have the um, functionalities of the group administrator for those specific groups okay so in a way with this modification we made the functionality of the general admin and the functionality of the group admin in a way disjoint so they are no longer one below the other but they add on top <coughs> of the of the role of student um, of course if a user is a general administrator and happens also to be a group administrator for some group then that user will see all these functions because he's a general administrator all the functions for students of course because everybody is a student and uh, for those groups uh, that he can administer, he will also have uh, the, the, these additional functionalities. Okay, so this is the idea. Uh, every user, basically in the user table, you have a set of roles to attach. Okay, a user may have a flag uh, in the user, user table. Uh, are you a general administrator? Yes or no? And may have probably a table or a list of groups that that user may administer okay so uh, you have more information about the users or about the groups okay the link uh, users and groups and you use that to render the application uh, I have maybe two, uh, two possibilities in mind for implementing all of this one is that uh, when you log in with your own you only have one account okay if one person is a general admin and also a group admin for one group it doesn't have two different accounts the account is only one okay and when he logs in he sees all the functionalities the easiest way to do but also maybe the ugliest okay um, is to uh, when you log in you have uh, maybe three different sections general administration group administration and normal operations and then these blocks will appear or not depending on your user profile okay this is one possibility um, especially with the general administrator it may may be worth uh, 
uh, having a, special, a separate section or a menu item or a part of the page that only appears in that case. With the group administrator, it's not so nice because actually you have the you already have the list of all groups that is uh, visible to everybody, and any user may have some actions uh, available on the groups, and we already have the post, uh, some actions that are uh, applicable to every group. For example, asking to join, and some actions that are only available on the groups that you already joined like uh, seeing the meetings or signing up for a future meeting. So probably it's easier hmm, just to add these functionalities to the same list. Hmm. So what I'm trying to say is maybe it's easier, but it's up to you, but, uh, actually. As long as these functionalities are provided, you can put them in two separate sections, administration of the groups or, let's say, normal student activity, or you can merge them Say okay, you have the list of the groups, you have maybe 10 groups, and depending on the group, okay, um, you have different actions that can that you can do. So for some actions, you can only see the list and ask to join because there are the groups that you don't are not part of. Or you may have uh, uh, these other functionalities if you are part of the group. Or you may have also these other functionalities if you are an administrator of that group. And all in the same, say, interface where the, 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 in, in, the, in the same uh, group list. But this uh, really depends on how you want to structure and uh, organize your, uh, your interface and your components. Hmm? Uh, so for answering the question that came out in the chat, uh, a user with this modification, uh, which is a simpler, uh, a user with a role of general administrator does not, okay, does not automatically have uh, all the functions of group administrators. If you are also a group administrator, then you have these functionalities. Otherwise, it doesn't fall um, automatically from the general mean. The general mean has only these functionalities in addition to uh, students. OK, so this, I think, this was the most, uh, let's say, controversial or difficult points we had in, the, uh, in your questions. There was another, uh, say, I think misunderstanding at the beginning, uh, maybe due to this active word, uh, that uh, looked like uh, you may have a list of courses, and some courses may have a study group uh, or not. Hmm? And uh, or the study group may be activated or not, depending on the course. Okay, this is not and it's not something that we wanted to put into this uh, text. Okay, so I try to remove the active study group, uh, and we only talk about uh, um, this. Let's say that it was never the intention. Okay, but it was probably a bit ambiguous. The idea is that either you have a study group, or you don't. The only constraint is that you don't, you may not have two study groups for the same course. So we just, you just put a constraint that the course can, you can only create a study group for a course that doesn't exist. We don't require anywhere to know in advance uh, the list of courses, right? So um, in a, so you don't have a list of courses and then you create a study group for a course. No, you just create a study group and the name of the course is an attribute of the study group, let's say. Okay, so uh, basically uh, this information about the course is something that you write in when you create a study group. It's not anything that the system knows uh, uh, beforehand, okay? So that should be simple. That's uh, one one concept of study groups that has some information. Um, and uh, uh, yes, also in the chat, I see that the course is already in the, the database. No, I, we don't require any list of courses to be in the database before. OK. Uh, so the information of this information about the course is just entered by the administrator when he creates the group. Nothing is known beforehand. You don't need to have a table with the courses. 
we don't need to have, to have prior knowledge about the courses okay the course information is just an attribute okay some of the information that is attached to the study group the real entity and the real concept is the study group not the course okay so you don't need to have this extra complexity uh, i don't know how to i how can i write it the study group is characterized by the information about the course uh, yeah you see that all of this is information that is uh, attached to the study group I can put a footnote, uh, okay, in the, in the text uh, so that uh, references footnote, uh, um, no prior information is needed about the courses. So hopefully it could be clear. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there are any other ambiguities or questions because I think this, these are the, the two points that I identified from your previous questions. Okay. Any any question? Uh, I well, we think it's uh, it should not be a difficult exam. It is not just should not be a difficult project. Maybe it's a bit boring. Uh, the the memes one in July was maybe more fun to implement. This is more a classical uh, say form based interface. Uh, you just I think. Uh, you should think well uh, how to organize the code okay because there are maybe quite a good number of uh, of different functionality and uh, you should try to implement them in a, in a compact way okay many functionalities are very similar or are repeated so um, i think the, the main difficulty is to how to organize the different functionalities of the different user roles Otherwise, it's just uh, you know uh, inserting data into into tables and uh, and something like that. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Do Georgia who is asking whether <clears throat> a user can ask to join a study group more than once if the admin doesn't answer to their request. I don't see anything uh, about this topic here in the in the request. So you can uh, what's that? The student may ask to join a study group. And of course, the request will go into a pending state. Okay, in a way, I asked. Okay, um, what may happen is with the, with the currently listed functionality is that the group administrator may approve the request or not. Not approving with this set of functionalities means that the request will stay pending. Okay. Uh, so basically, you cannot uh, open a second request uh, because the first one is already open; it's still not answered. So there is. A, I know that is not realistic because realistically, either you have a timeout or you can have uh, you know, some explicit reject or something like that. But there is no requirement here. Okay, so the workflow is very simple. I ask, and when the administrator will approve me, will I? I will be until it doesn't approve because it doesn't want to or because it forgets or uh, my uh, request will stay pending and I'm not in the group, okay? Uh, asking to join, can, I think it cannot be repeated uh, more than once, okay? Because uh, uh, the, uh, then there's probably the issue is after I'm being removed, can I ask again to join? Uh, probably the simplest answer is yes. Okay, remember that whenever we try, of course, not to put all the functionalities in there, but only some minimal ones, uh, when you try to, let's say, decide how to implement the rest, uh, always try to find the easiest solution for you, okay? The simplest one. Okay, so for example, when I'm kicked out, uh, can I ask again to join? The simplest answer is yes, 
because in the yes case you don't have to remember anything about the past okay or the past uh, um, let's say um, memberships of the groups um, okay so basically the the short answer is uh, you can decide how to what whatever you want because it's not specified the simplest answer is uh, to Georgia is no uh, it's not required to to be able to ask a second time and uh, a question from Paolo is when a group administrator defines a new meeting can we consider him as already signed up for that meeting or not um, I think both uh, both possibilities are acceptable in any case hmm? so you can imagine the administrator that just organizes the meetings but it doesn't participate in them personally and it's okay or he can also say by default uh, is in hmm. I, I don't see any requirement for inserting automatically the the group administrator uh, but if you want to do that as part of the of the creation of the meeting, uh, you can do that. Uh, it's not forbidden. Hmm? It's an extra, just an extra query that you have to run. But uh, if you stay with the text, uh, you are defining a meeting. Defining a meeting doesn't de doesn't imply defining the participation to the meeting. Okay. So from the text, I would only say it opens the meeting with a date and location, and then a uh, different user will try to join, signing up. Okay. So I see them as separate uh, functionalities. If you want to join them for that specific case, uh, you can do that, but uh, I didn't see no, it's not needed and not uh, required. Any further questions? Okay, if uh, I don't see any activity in the chat uh, or in the voice, uh, so I I think I assume that uh, you don't have uh, specific questions at the moment. Uh, so I just remind you that we may continue the conversation on the Slack channel. I'll uh, uh, publish the modified text uh, probably later today after I I, uh, I also align with the other colleagues of the other courses uh, so that uh, the requirements are the same in the three courses so if it's not because uh, I think that the colleagues will have the, the chat uh, on uh, Wednesday if I'm not mistaken so uh, I'm probably check uh, that uh, this can also be modified well there may be some little modification also after after Wednesday, okay, so that we can try to have the text aligned. But most of the um, of the topics are there. Of course, when you go into more detail, we will have more questions, and uh, we have this lecture uh, exam three channel uh, just for that. Um, okay, just remember to 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 clone the project and. Uh, and enroll in the exam so that, you, that we don't have any problems at the end. And uh, about the timings, uh, um, it uh, uh, just to plan for for the oral discussions. Uh, it a lot depends on uh, how many people uh, submit a project, of course. Uh, because if there is only a handful, a handful of people, like I saw yesterday that there were only probably 10, 
10 people who cloned the project up to now but of course they can do that <laughs> until the, the the last day so it's, it's not uh, um, it's not a real uh, real data but if there are only uh, 10 or 20 people or less less than 20 probably we i can publish the date the discourse uh, in the same week uh, as the deadline and the oral discussion will be in the next week uh, or otherwise uh, uh, we, i will probably need more more uh, more days so the the, the orals may shift uh, at the end of the next of the week after the the deadline um, yes, Andrea, uh, I'm publishing, I, I, I will publish this version that we edited together today with the warning maybe on Wednesday there can also be some slight uh, variations, but I will write on the channel in that case, okay, so that you can you can exa know exactly where to look, okay. So, but I want to, to, uh, to have it out right now so that you can start having some, some uh, let's say, some sure points uh, to work on, and if there are some minor issues, I will tell you. Um, okay, so I will let you to spend the rest of the day, maybe you are in vacation, so I will be happy for you, or not, uh, and uh, we can uh, say keep in touch uh, uh, on Slack uh, until the until the exam deadline for any problem you might have. Okay. So, thanks for joining today. Sorry for the problem before for connection, but I don't know what it was, but uh, we solved it. Um, and uh, see you in the next days. Bye-bye.